Hello everybody, Mr. The Vest Man here on this fine foggy morning. And we are bringing you some more Shank 2 and what we have here is the second level. And I believe we're the same characters, yes. I am still... I believe it's called Shank Original and Todd is the girl to which I know not her name. But the... just the starter girl. Because Todd was a genius and lost his save file. And that is him humping the ground. So the second level is different. Each level is unique. They don't all have the same trap layout or the same traps in general. They do tend to have the same wave layout, so you can kind of expect a similar way. So if you played the first one, expect the same similar setup for the second one. I think there's minor variations, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, so just continuing on with the tips, uh, you saw that there. I shot the birds. Uh, the birds you should always shoot. The birds will randomly drop stuff. They right, make you drop again. money. They might drop health, which is always a good thing. They, I, I don't know if they can drop grenades and whatnot, but usually it's the health you're looking for. So it's always in your interest if you see a bird flying across the screen to shoot. This is, I think there is uh, more birds on the boat level, so uh, more chances for that. Also. Uh, another thing I never really touched upon is the bomb guys. So the bomb guys, they, uh, they're they giant douchebags. They run around throwing grenades when they're bored, and when they're not bored, they try to plant bombs. And it's really easy to actually stop them from planting the bomb. If you grab them, it stops the bomb from being planted. You can jump on them like you usually see me do. I like doing that jump attack, whatever it's called. It's really fun. I just think it's really dramatic, because you're just like, ah. And you can also just beat the shit out of them, obviously. Obviously, that is going to work. But highly, no. well, not highly ill-advised, but just a little less advised because it does take longer and it won't necessarily stun them. Also, interesting note, is you can throw them like that and they explode. So you have to grab them and I believe it's the X button for a directional throw. Or maybe you just push the joystick. I'm sure you know how to do it, but it's very useful because they actually do a lot of damage. So like if you throw them at bad dude, boom, bad dude's health disappears. Also, once again, just going to reiterate that you should always, always on the survival mode, try to pick stuff that complements your partner. Uh, if you both have the same thing, it's slightly less effective, you know. Uh, for instance, if you're playing as someone with a uh, really good physical attack, you should probably have someone that has really good ranged attack, or you should probably have someone who has more health, and yada yada yada. Don't, like, don't both pick the same character, because then you're not really covering a lot of ground. Diversity is the spice of the life. So on this level, you can see, whoop, uh, the traps, instead of being instant kills, they're fire traps. So you're going to have a little tougher time with the boss. And you see, uh, you see me and Todd trying to lure him around to the various fire traps. Now the fire traps are pretty useful. I, I cut that one out right to another one. The fire traps are pretty useful because unlike the uh, traps that kind of open up and the guys fall in them, the fire traps, as long as they're like in the fire, they don't really have a chance to get out. The the other traps, uh, if the enemy is quick, you know, if he's right on the edge, sometimes he'll jump over. Or, uh, depending on how high the fall is, sometimes he'll simply just miss the, uh, uh, the grinder or the spikes or whatever it is at the bottom of the second pit. So, yeah, Todd went down. Can you guys believe that? Gosh, he sucks. <laughs> so, the fire traps are actually pretty nice. The only thing is, obviously, it's not an instant kill, as opposed to, um, normally being an instant kill for the spike traps and the grinder traps and whatnot. Um, what else do we have to speak of? The zombie levels still do happen here, of course. Boosh! I guess we could talk about reviving at people. So, when your ally goes down, uh, he will stay down infinitely. Infinite amount of time go by, he will still be down. So, you don't have to worry about picking him up right away. That's not a big concern. Look at that epic dodge, and then I get punched! So, I said last uh, last level that uh, the big guys have a ton of health, or, or do tons of damage, and yeah, so I just lost like a third of my health. And, um, but yeah, so if you go down, you can see like Todd here, there's really no concern for getting me up, because I'm going to stay down forever. I'm not going to disappear, we're not going to fail, you can just wait it out. And the best thing to do is, if, if you have the ability to, clear out the level and pick up your friend. 
if you're in a jam, you could try to pick them up, but obviously you run the, because you can't move while you're doing it, you run the risk of uh, getting killed yourself. But what you saw right there is when you go to pick someone up, you if you can do one of two things. You can go up to him, tap the R RB button, and he will get up and he'll have a little bit of health, maybe like 25% of his health. Or, if you hold down RB, you'll see that little circle fill up, and that's going to decide how much extra health I get. So, because he fully revived me, held the RB down to the maximum amount, I got half my health back uh, when I got uh, when I got up. Um, if you don't do that, then... Uh, actually, you saw it earlier in the video. Then if you don't do it, then you only get... I got, I got messed up by them zombies. If you don't hold down RB, then you only get around 20-25%. But I mean, that's a that's kind of a case by case thing, you know. Sometimes you don't have time to hold down RB because it takes a long time for it to charge. So for right there, there we go. So there's a quick one, and that's about a quarter of my health. So yeah, around 20, 25 percent. And it really just comes down to the situation you're in. Obviously, it's nice to have the more health, but you can't always have that as an option. Wah! Fire! That's another great tip. Uh, super great tip, actually, in fact. Don't set off the traps on your friends. Happens a lot, and it really pays to be coordinated. Me and Todd were pretty rusty. It had been a while. On the first level, I cut it out. I, th I think there I left one in the video. But we actually team-killed ourselves like five times. Mostly uh, mostly Todd killing me, but I think I got him once. Uh, the traps, you got to be really careful. The fire traps aren't so bad, obviously. It's not instant kill. You can jump out of the fire before it's uh, really really tier 3 health. But the other traps, they, you know, they're instant kill. So if you land in them, you will die. Uh, it's not game over, it just, it will, um, it'll, sh Watch out. I guess, shoot your body out, and you'll just lay dead until someone revives you. So it's not like, uh, it's not like if you fall in the trap, it's the end of the world. It just kind of sucks. It's inconvenient. And, yeah, so that's, uh, that's really about it for the tips for this level. Just try to make good use of the fire. The fire is really good. There's also a challenge for the fire. You have to kill, I think, like, 100 enemies with the fire trap. And really just teamwork. Once again, teamwork is your biggest thing on this. You're not going to get very far without it. You have to be coordinated. I really suggest you do this with someone you know. Uh, you practice, too. Uh, you really want to practice. Make use of your items. Once again, this whole, this whole survival mode is about making money and, you know, getting stuff with it. Uh, you can see I don't spend my money half as often as Todd does because Todd earns way more money than I do. So I try to save my money just for health and the bare essentials. Whereas Todd loves to buy decoys and other stuff. And that's that's totally what you should be doing. And if I was making more money, I would be too. But unfortunately, I like I've said before, I'm not as good as him at this. So I don't make as much money. But then, once again, it comes down to your weapon loadout too. So, uh, since I tend to use the sledgehammer, that's not a good weapon to make money with. The sledgehammer is so powerful, you can't combo with it. It's just designed to kill enemies in one to two hits. So, keep all that in mind. And just really teamwork. Teamwork, 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 and practice. You've really got to get a feel for the combo system, for the, the battle system in general. Um, you have never see me do it, but counters are really good. Uh, grabs are really good. All that kind of stuff that I never do because it just doesn't occur to me to do it. But I thank you for watching, I hope this helps, and we will see everyone on the final level of Shank 2 Survival.